Well, that's it from the 2022 IBJJF Pan Championships. Myself, Hal Teague, and Jake Watson have been commentating the last two days. A lot of action here, a lot of results. Um, we're not going to be able to recap everything that took place over the last two days, but we can pick some of the standout moments that, that we both just identified throughout the last two days of action, because there was a lot. Oh, absolutely. I mean, we had the opportunity to commentate Tynan Dalber versus Roberto Jimenez, which is a like a fan's dream. And Tynan, and that was a crazy match. Roberto looked like he had a couple moments in that match, but Tynan did what Tynan does, and he was very isolating. Yeah, let's break it down first of all. We'll take a look at the fact that the overall uh, results of the academies, we had the, the, the team race, and basically it was Atos and Dream Art head and head to head, and Atos came out in the end, although it was close because they had 79 points and Dream Art came in at 65 plus nine for Eric Moniz's gold medal in the absolutes. So Dream Art, with less than a year as a fully independent professional team, they basically, they got, uh, broke away from Alliance in about September of last year, at September, October, and since then, they've been representing Dream Art uh, by themselves. And as a result, there, what's happened is that they've risen to become one of the leading teams among all of the academies, because you look at the top three, Atos, Dream Art, Alliance in yep. that order, and going down, Checkmat, Novo Niao, and so on and so on. And that is pretty incredible for such a young team, but they are stacked from blue to black belt. It says all three Muniz brothers definitely were representing the black belt ranks, but they were, they were competitors at every belt. They were competitors at the brown, at the purple, and the blue. Mm -hmm. But maybe we should talk about the big, the big, oh, the big name. <laughs> Dream Hard, of course, yes. Like Featherweight Mira Malvez. Let's talk about Eric Muniz. Absolute final there against Felipe Andrew. Uh, I think he wanted to get one back for his brother because Felipe Andrew tapped out Anderson Muniz twice, once in the super heavyweight division and once in the absolute division. And Eric looked like he had a point to prove in that final. Absolutely. I mean, you, even right off the bat, toward the yellow area over there, he immediately went for a very tight toehold, to which Felipe Andrew didn't even have a reaction to it, very surprisingly, as he walked back to the center, not even a limp on his foot. But Eric Muniz definitely looked like he had a point to prove. You're definitely right about that. Uh, just going through some of the weight divisions that stood out for me, the champions, uh, I was particularly impressed with Roberto Cyborg because this man, 41 years of age, comes out, takes on men so 15, 20 years younger than himself, people who probably weren't even training jiu-jitsu when Cyborg got his black belt, and uh, he beat three GF Team heavy hitters in a row. There was, in the quarterfinal, Wallace Costa. In the semifinal, Davi Cabral. And in the final, Gutenberg Pereira. What did you make of Cyborg's performance? Man, Cyborg's performance of the entire weekend just shows that he is so consistent. His base on top. I don't think he actually got swept a single time in the whole tournament, if I'm not mistaken. And in the final, he was able to wade through a lot of Gutenberg's attacks. I mean... Gutenberg threw up two really smart triangle setups with the lapel around the back, and Cyborg was able to stifle them off and really maintain a good lead off of Gutenberg's mistake as well. So the maturity also of Cyborg coming through, very impressive performance. Absolutely. Uh, another performance that stood out to me was that of the middleweight champion, Tynan Dalpra. Mm. And Tynan, of course, we, uh, we know that he's one of the best black belts in the world. Of course, that is no secret. This guy, he took the black belt at the Pan Championship in 2021, followed it up with the World Championship gold medal in December of last year, came back this year, European champion, Pan champion. I mean, to be honest, I don't see anybody standing in his way. And the gap only seems to be widening. Oh yeah, he's so young. He's got he's got room to improve in ways that are kind of scary for other competitors and for us as people watching is just so exciting. I mean, he is the way he passes the guard is so it's almost demoralizing the longer the match goes on because you don't have an option. Right. I mean, we, see, we even saw the, the clever guard play of Jefferson Guaresi in the final. It just wasn't enough. And he was doing a good job keeping the pressure off of him for most of the match, but then eventually it just becomes too much. He's too consistent, and he has gears that he switches into. Yeah, one of the things that I was most impressed about in Titan in the final with Jefferson Guaresi was as exactly as you said, that about the midway point through the match that he just stepped on the gas pedal, accelerated through, and all of a sudden went from a relatively pedestrian pace the first half of the match, poured it on, and did not stop until he secured the three points. Let's talk about that title run, because the final against Jefferson Guarezzi, preceded by a really tough semi-final match against Ronaldo Jr., who is 
a handful to deal with. I think that's uh, you know, the least you could say. Uh, submitted uh, Eduardo Avila of Double Five Jiu Jitsu and submitted Roberto Jimenez in his first elimination match. That is an incredible run, possibly the toughest run to the gold medal for Tynan Dalpra, and he emerged the champion once again, proving for me why he is one of the very best in the world, if not top three in the world in the gi, possibly even number one pound for pound right now. Yeah, and we haven't seen him do too much in the open divisions yet, but I wouldn't be surprised to see him within the next couple of years starting to sign up for those open divisions. And pff, he still would be a front runner, even in the opens. He has the strength of a heavyweight at middleweight and like the speed of a lightweight. Very scary competitor. Let's talk about his teammate, Jonathan Alves, who took the gold in the lightweight division against Andy Murasaki. Tough match. Oh, yes. Murasaki looked very aggressive, almost even more aggressive than usual, putting himself out there in a lot of different situations in his previous match, like with Igor Feliz. And Jonathan just had the answer. A very interesting switch of game plan for Jonathan going into the Murasaki match to go for a takedown right off the bat, too. Or, I'm sorry, a sweep coming up for a single leg right off the bat and putting Murasaki on his back, something we hadn't seen too much of Murasaki this tournament. No, absolutely not. Uh, Jonathan also had to go through Nathan Schweng in the semi-final, uh, Daniel Aquino in the quarter-final, and Eduardo Hockey in the elimination match, taking his third IBJJF Pan Championship gold medal as a black belt in three consecutive years, 2020, 2021, and now 2022. Talk about some of the, uh, the women's divisions, because there were some real standout champions in the women's divisions as well. Who would you like to go with? I think we've got to start out with Maisa Bastos. Maisa Bastos continuing her dominance in the Roosterweight division, having a really, I mean, just an impressive showcase against Lavinia Barbosa in the final of her division. And w when does her dominance end? We're talking about Tynan Dalpra. <laughs> Maisa Bastos is in the same boat. Who is going to defeat Maisa Bastos? I was, uh, I was particularly impressed as well by that of uh, Natalie Hibero, a.k.a. Tata Hibero of Checkmat. Uh, her final with Fionn Davis was a uh, uh, particularly entertaining match, but I'm also thinking back to her match yesterday with Janaya Maya of uh, Gracio Maita, which was a, uh, a very hard-fought match uh, that personally we were worried that would stop, but would end before it, was, it would even get started because... 30 seconds into the match, Tata's knee locks out. She gets it looked at. It looks like it's a serious problem. However, she shakes it out. She gets back in there, and then they go head-to-head -head in a war. Tata emerges the winner, and then she comes back, and she has another physical encounter with uh, Fionn Davis today. Um, just showcase some great jiu-jitsu in the process. It was fantastic, and it was even more impressive. I mean, beating Jenna and Amaya and Fionn Davis, already impressive enough, but bouncing back from a knee injury that, like you said, we were convinced here on the mic that that might be it. Yeah. And then for her to bounce back and go through both of those competitors is incredibly impressive. And it speaks a lot to her heart as well. Another standout match for me in the women's divisions had to be the uh, the heavyweight division final between that of Melissa Cueto of Alliance and Maggie Grindati of Fight Sports. That was a... Uh, <laughs> That was a physical, that was almost a bit of a brawl, that. Right? There was a, uh, that was a, a, a tough, tough match. That was my first time seeing in the women's division an eye swell up that big. And Maggie Grindotti had her own injury that she was dealing with from uh, last week at ADCC, if we're not Serious mistaken. Serious arm injury, basically Serious. fighting with one arm. And you could see it a minute into the match that she was wincing, the, the, the look on her face, and it was, uh, it was a, a, no small obstacle to overcome, but they made it the full match, and Melissa Cueto got a submission in the final 60 seconds. That is a incredible victory. Oh, incredible victory. And to, to not even be worried about her eye either. You could tell that the referee was more worried about the eye injury than she was. And just a really, again, a great, a great testament to the heart of two competitors and a really exciting final. Congratulations to all the champions here in all the belt divisions from blue through black this weekend. Very entertaining. Lots of action. You could go back. You could check all the interviews, replays, highlights, and more on flowgrappling.com from myself Howell and Jake it's been a pleasure to have you here and we'll see you next time